So yeah. <laughs> Love and Hip Hop New York Season 5, I believe. Episode... Three, four. I don't even know. I'm so fucked up right now. I just went off. And like I'm literally perspiring right about now. I'm like so fucking outdone. I don't know what to do. That was the slap hurdle around the world, my nigga. Like Tara slapped the holy shit out of Amina. Tara slapped like five songs out of Amina ass. Tara slapped like five verses, bitch. Like a 16 bar rap nigga out of her ass. That shit was fucking everything. Oh my god, it is Talk Shit Monday. I give this episode a fucking A++++++. Plus 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 plus. Mona Scott, bitch. You did that ignorant ass shit, bitch. I don't even know what the fuck to say. This bitch just gives us the, all the ratchet foolery that I can withstand. Like, whoo, I need like a, I need like a insulin shot right about now, my nigga. Like, I feel like I got diabetes, like my sugar is low. Woo, that episode just gave me everything. Like, I just want to shout. Woo. Okay, so let's get into my favorite moments from tonight. But check my finger waves out. The finger waves is back. Yes, God. Okay, let's get into my favorite moments because the bitch is hype. Yes. So first we see Peter and he still has on that whack ass orange button up from last week that he looked like he got from JCPenney outlets or some shit. And I'm just like, oh God. And then in his commentary, he got on that red pullover turtleneck zipper shirt. And I'm like, who the fuck would date a nigga that wears a red zipper pullover turtleneck like he my fucking granddaddy or some shit like both of y'all need y'all motherfucking ass beat for dating this old ass geriatric ass AARP ass nigga then we see Tara getting off the elevator she like she about to go to work and Peter tells her to meet her at the meet him at the studio cause he got something important that he need to tell her now I don't know if that bitch worked the night shift cause it looked a little dark I don't know if she worked the daytime shift but bitch, let me tell you one thing. Let a nigga. This happened to me before. One of my ex boyfriends broke up with me before I had to go to motherfucking work, nigga. And I tell you, a bitch called off some motherfucking quick, nigga. I was in that motherfucking bed shook for the rest of the damn day. That is the most rudest bullshit that a nigga can do. Break up before, break up with your ass, or drop some shit on your ass right before you got to go to fucking work. How the fuck you supposed to go to work and clock in and ring your customers out, motherfuckers, and make a double uh, motherfucking cheeseburger or some motherfucking fries, nigga, or get a bitch a Coke when you got this shit on your mind? So I feel your pain, Tara, with that bullshit. So she come in there. She got on her nice little work clothes, her receptionist outfit, and she like, what's up, Peter? And he like, you know, I got something to tell you. And she like, what is it? He's like, you know, I, I fucked up. She like, how you fuck up, Peter? You know, niggas, every time they do something, they got to go around the motherfucking mulberry bush before they get the shit out. And he like, you know, I fucked uh, Amina. And she like, what you mean you fucked Amina? He was like, I fucked her. You know, I've I been, I been smashing her. And she like, excuse you? Like, nigga, this is what you do? And she gets to hitting on him and shit. Let me tell you something. Ha! If I would have been Tara, that whole motherfucking studio, bitch, would have looked like a goddamn basement studio by the time I got done with it. Nigga, been fucked up. It wouldn't have been a motherfucking microphone in that bitch. It wouldn't have been no knobs in that motherfucker. It wouldn't have been none of them voice activated things. They make the bitches sound good. None of that shit would have been in there no more. Because that motherfucker would have looked like a tornado went through that bitch. I would and then I know she felt stupid. Because while she's sitting up there working her nice little receptionist job. Or being a secretary. Or being a home health care aide. Or whatever the fuck she do for a living. And this nigga sitting up there fucking. While she out there making her little coins. To take care of their little matchbox ass apartment. Girl. Like you are the worst nigga ever in life Peter Guns. You are the worst sorriest light skinned ass nigga I've ever seen in my life nigga. You are worse than Drake to me now. You are worse than Al B. Shaw, Christopher Williams. Or any other light skinned nigga out there. Like, bitch, Terry, you was a better bitch to me. Because I swear to God, I would have went Foxy Brown on that nigga ass. I would have went Raw Digger on his ass, nigga. I would have went motherfucking uh, the brat on his ass. I would have went 
I rock rough and stuff with my afro puff. Hey, rock on with your bad self on his ass. Like, we would have been in there banging. She should have whooped his ass like she whooped Tara ass. Because she whooped that bitch ass. Like, she had the spirit of Hulk Hogan in her chest, bit. Breath the Hitman heart. Stone Cold Steve Austin, bitch. Kane, the Undertaker. But we don't get to that next. I'm, I'm, I'm jumping ahead. Next. And then... He didn't even have the nerve to even tell the girl that not only has he been banging her back out and munching on her damn red carpet. <laughs> he ain't even trying to tell the bitch that he had married her ass. He gonna leave that little gym for later. You just gotta just get this bitch even more heartache. Like, what kind of cruel ass nigga are you? That's that light skin nigga shit. Light skin niggas are the cruelest niggas or nick bitches. Y'all better date a dark skin nigga. These light skin niggas is out to kill and destroy. Then Peter ass gonna go to Amina and he like, you know, I told old girl you should be happy. I mean, I told her I was smashing you. Like, what kind of fucking condolence prize is that, nigga? You act like she on The Price is Right and she just went down and played Planko or some shit and won $10,000. You ain't gave this bitch no damn prize by telling her that you fuck her. You ain't even tell the bitch that you was married to her. And Amina sitting there with her vampire teeth, bitch, looking like goddamn me. Vampire from Twilight and shit look like she glow and shit in the damn sunlight. <laughs> She's just like, I thought you was going to tell her about us being married. Well, I guess I'm going to have to tell her then. And he just like, oh, like you bitches just getting on my motherfucking nerves. We see Naya and Erica in the studio arguing about who's relevant. Who's more relevant than the other? The last time I checked, neither one of y'all bitches were relevant. Ain't none of y'all on the Billboard Top 200. Ain't none of y'all on the top of the pop charts. Ain't none of y'all on 106 and Park. Ain't none of y'all on iTunes. Like, what the fuck, nigga? Only both of y'all on YouTube like me. I'm more relevant than you all are. Like, get the fuck out of here. Young Ratchet, my alter ego is more relevant than Nia Lee and Erica Mena. I drop bars, my nigga. Like, I got the motherfucking talent, but we're not going to even go there today because Young Ratchet is, you know, in the studio right about now dropping a hot 16. She ain't got time for that bullshit right now. But both of y'all can suck me and Young Ratchet dick if y'all think that y'all more relevant than I am. Like, Erica, get your ass somewhere and sit the fuck down. You couldn't out sing me or my best friend Losha on your motherfucking best day and Losha can't sing worth the damn. Losha sound like a goddamn cat that's been ran over by a tractor trailer. <laughs> And Naya Lee looked like she didn't fought every blood, crip, deuce, deuce, <laughs> vato, el almina loca <laughs> out here. That bitch looked like she been fighting for her motherfucking life, bitch. That bitch is tired of shaking that big ass hoes in the club, bitch. This bitch is trying to get her a motherfucking hit record, bitch. And she got a little bit of talent, but she just reminds me of a soft ass dick. She reminds me of a five inch penis that you just could not get hard for the life of you. You just be sucking and sucking. You just, come on. Wake up. <laughs> That's what she Then they do a whole slow motion ass video that Mona Scott has become famous for where she look like she doing a one minute video, bitch, a teaser ass video. And they playing John Legend, all of me. And I'm like, y'all tried it with that shit. And Tara walking on that old dusty, dirty ass floor to look like it ain't been mopped in five years, bitch. And she go sit on that old dusty ass couch that they got back out back from in the alleyway of my uh, apartment. And she's sitting on the damn couch and she crying and she just saying how her life is still the same as it was five years before. Obviously, bitch, look at you where you live at. Obviously, shit ain't got no better. And she's saying how she just feel like she fucked up and she's stupid. Yeah, bitch, you are stupid. Because when you found out this nigga had a baby on you, you should have left his ass. Where did y'all, where did you actually think y'all relationship was going to go after that? Up? Bitches, get y'all motherfucking life together. Get y'all mind right. Tara, if you're watching this, please watch every last episode of Ask Keisha and Mo, bitch, and get the motherfucking Jesus in your life, bitch. You need some motherfucking bless oil, bitch. You need for Blue Ivy to come slap the shit out of you with her 10-inch dick, bitch. Ain't nobody got time for you and your fool, Wayne, Tara. I'd be scared out of my damn mind if I woke up next to Peter fucking Panky, bitch. I would feel like my whole life has gone to shit, bitch. How did I fucking get her in life? I'ma wake up. And we see Tara and her little 
lipstick lesbian girlfriend sin i guess that was her name at this little mexicana ass restaurant she like why do we come here i want to go to chipotle i like chipotle and i swear to god they endorsed the fuck out of chipotle and that goddamn scene if chipotle ain't giving them bitches a check they better because them dumb assholes was just big up chipotle i don't even think i ever ate at a fucking chipotle and now i don't even want to knowing that sin and erica like frequenting fucking chipotles every motherfucking thursday night and getting motherfucking bean burritos and shit and i'm like this was just from foreplay for them lesbian bitches she like i want some chipotle and she like can i eat your pussy now or later can we spread some refried beans on it bitch and i'm like oh my god what kind of shit is this that was just foreplay for them lesbian ass bitches and i was not here for it i love my gays but i did not want to see erica fantasizing over eating sin fishy ass pushy that look like she need every mass and gill in walgreens my nigga like i just was not there for that bullshit mona i don't want to see that shit then we see tahiri catching joe cheating on her once again bitch what the fuck did you expect this is joe button he been cheating on your ass since 1982 bitch she come in the room, she's sitting on the bed, and they in the midst of talking, and she look down and, oh, what is this? It's a piece of her. And he like, yeah, it's a piece of her. One of my friends was over here the night before. She like, oh, really? So then she goes pulling back fucking covers and shit, and the sheets has changed, the pillowcases has changed. She like, you don't change the damn covers unless I change them. Only time you change the covers is if I do. And he like, well, the covers is dirty. And so, he got the covers sitting on the damn chair next to the bed. She get to pulling up the shit. The dirty covers got foundation and shit and concealer and blush and lipstick and MAC lip glass and shit all over it. She like, oh, so this is why you changed the shit? You had another bitch in my motherfucking bed, nigga, the bed that I fucked and sucked your dick in? And he like, we didn't do anything. Yeah, okay. Y'all didn't do anything. Mm-hmm. All right. And the sky ain't blue, my nigga. Like, get the fuck out of her. You fucked the shit out that bitch and didn't even try to even hide the evidence. But that's what niggas do once you start letting them get away with so much bullshit. They don't even give a fuck no more about trying to hide shit. They just gonna lie to your face and treat you like a motherfucking psycho, like a crazy person that needs to be at Malcolm Bliss Institutional up the street. That's what niggas start to do to your ass once you start letting them get away with so much bullshit, ladies. They will lie to your face and make you feel like you are fucking insane like you were fucking losing your mind like you a monica in that so gone ass video that's what these niggas will do to you don't you let these niggas drive you fucking crazy bitches no man the best part of the night is when yandy and rich met up with amina at her look showcase that she had at starbucks or some shit you know where they let a local artist come and perform for free i don't know what the fuck it was at some random coffee house or some shit in soho or the west village or the meat packing district i don't know and so she come out and Yandy taking little dibs of her. She was like, you know what? I, I I know that you uh you feel like you a star. And she like, yeah, I think that I'm a star. She's like, well, if you feel like you a star, then why do you like playing second? And next thing you know, here come Tara. And it's like, dun, 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 dun. And then Tara like, you know, can I come in? Can I sit down? Because I want to talk to you. And <laughs> Amina put two and two together with her vampire psychic senses. And she like, oh, so this is what you meant, Yandy. And Yandy like, yeah, bitch, that's what the fuck I meant. Now I'm about to sip on this motherfucking drink, bitch, and enjoy the motherfucking show. And Tara like, you know what? How did you not know that we and him were together? And she like, well, he just told me that he was with you for the kids. And she like, are you are you really going to sit up there and believe that? You think we're just going to be living together? He there for the kids? She like, well, that's what he told me. And she like, you know what? Uh, he loves me. And she like, oh, so you think he loves you? I think that he's with you for convenience or some shit like that. And she like, oh, you think it's for convenience or you think whatever the fuck she said. And the next thing you know, Amina pulls out some motherfucking ring and a piece of paper that I guess shows that she was married. But who walks around with that shit in their bra? Everybody knew that this shit was going down. This, that scene was so totally pre-planned. Everybody knew the shit was about to go down. And next thing you know, Tara reared back and high five with Jesus, bitch, and slapped the shit out of Amina. I mean, she slapped her so hard, I thought I got slapped. I was like, what the fuck is going on? She beat her ass like I beat Kyrie's ass when a teacher called home talking about he acted up in school. She beat her ass like she was whooping her five you old baby and she was about to break that motherfucking baby back. She beat her ass ass like Chris Brown beat Rihanna ass in that car that night when she went through his motherfucking cell phone nigga Whew. 
Lord have mercy, she beat the shit out of that girl in 5.2.2 seconds. Did nobody even see that shit come? We thought Tara was all intelligent and articulate and shit. And she fooled the shit out of us. She should have beat Peter ass though like that instead of beating Amina ass like that. She gave him some old love taps and shit when she was in that damn studio hitting on him. But she beat Amina ass like she had been waiting for that bitch to slip up. She had been waiting on that shit to happen. She had been waiting for that shit to go down. And I don't blame her. But she should have beat both of their asses, my nigga, at the same damn time. Because that's what the fuck I would have did. So... And that was my review for tonight, baby. That shit gave me chills. It gave me all my life, bitch. I want to go sing a song, motherfucker. I want to sing, you take my love and I'm willing. There's no limit to the love I'm giving. The love I'm giving. I can't even sing. I'm not a good voice. My nose stopped up. But that's how I'm feeling right about now. I want to be like, don't. Drop that thud thud uh, hey, don't drop that thud thud uh, like, that shit got me hyped to the motherfucker, I'm about to go watch that shit again, my nigga, woo, I can't wait till next week, I don't know if we're gonna have another Ask Keisha Mo this week, cause it's supposed to snow, I don't know, hopefully we will, but I will be back this Thursday with a new scandalous Thursday episode, I'm sorry I wasn't here last week, bitch, a bitch was tired, I got sick, so I'm sorry, but, I give tonight's episode A plus 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 plus. I love you all. Have a wonderful, beautiful, sexy ass night. Get some dick, get some pussy for me, cause I ain't getting none. Sad face. Hopefully I do this weekend though. Woo! She tried it. Love y'all so much. Bye.